Hi, I'm Ray Gessen with Chimney Sweeps International, and today's topic is fire brick joints. Who would have a topic on just fire brick joints? Well, the reason why is that they're pretty important. Uh, you may have heard earlier in some other videos, and you may not have, but normal mortar joints are 3 8 inch thickness, but they have a tolerance. It can go up to almost 3 quarter inch in thickness. However, fire brick joints, they can only be a quarter inch max thickness. Why? Well, people don't really know why. But they really do, but they don't. So, so building codes over time has found out that, hey, these fire brick joints have problems. How come they have problems? They aren't sure why. And all of a sudden, uh, as building codes go on and go on and go on, it, it's as someone said, there's some problems on these fire brick joints, I just don't understand it. How we're gonna solve that is, is we're gonna make the thickness requirement of a quarter inch thickness. Uh, that was one building code. And then another building code had said, hey, know what? How about if we say that the fire brick has got to use refractory mortar? Okay, refractory mortar. Uh, another one said, hey, know what? How about if we say that it's got to be uh, regular mortar and have fire clay in it? And they're all trying to figure out it's what the problem of these, these brick joints are. They know there's a problem, but they don't know how to solve it. Finally, the latest building codes that's been going on for the last like 20 years, it says, you know what? The brick joints have got to be a quarter inch thick and it's got to use uh, uh, ASTM refractory mortar. All right, what does that mean? Here's what it means. Back in the old days, they used to make lime mortar. They used to make chimneys all the time and they would use lime mortar. Lime mortar is great. It's called hydraulic mortar. Anyway, so uh, th then they changed to this thing called Portland cement. Uh, that was around 1900. And then they started making mortar out of Portland cement. Well, guess what? Portland cement just doesn't do very well in high temperatures. It's actually, it doesn't do well in high temperatures. It goes up to a certain amount. And then as it cools through about, oh, maybe 600 degrees Fahrenheit, it starts breaking apart. Go figure. You wouldn't know. So building codes now call to have refractory mortar and a quarter inch thickness. I think what they really want is, is that they want the refractory mortar. It doesn't matter about the quarter inch thickness. All they know is that there's mortar joints that are failing. So, how do mortar joints fail? They fail, one, because of water. You get water come down, get inside of these mortar joints that are already deteriorating and it causes problems. Two, they're not using refractory mortar. Uh, they're using regular fire clay uh, inside of regular mortar. Now there are ASTM type mortars and there are some uh, that use Portland cement inside of these mortars. But what they use is, is they use these special aggregates. And what's an aggregate? An aggregate's like the sand and the little pebbles and things like that that goes in it to make up the mortar. So it's got the cement, special aggregates, and all the other items. And what ends up happening is, is that if you use this special stuff, then it won't break down as it drops under the 600 degree Fahrenheit temperature. That's called ASTMC 199 type of mortar. What does that mean to you as a homeowner? It means this, if you're looking at your fireplace and you see there's a bunch of deteriorated mortar joints and you know it's either one caused by water getting inside of it or two, it's not, it's not refractory mortar and that's what's happening. So how do you fix it? It all depends on how bad it is. It's my advice is, is that you can take and grind out the mortar joints and then install real refractory mortar in there. Hopefully it'll bond the mortar joints all together and everything's great. But if that doesn't work, then what you're gonna need to do is, is you're gonna have to disassemble the whole, a whole entire firebox and relay all the bricks and this time use ASTMC 199 refractory mortar. Uh, and keep your chimney watertight. I mean, water also deteriorates it real bad. And so you got two, two uh, groups of forces trying to tear up your firebox. Prices involved, it can be cheap. It could be as much as uh, $1,500 to take a firebox and rebuild it. This has been your instructional video about firebox joints for homeowners. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ray Gesser with Chimney Soups International. See you soon.